Scream 6 is directed by Matt Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette and has the cast of Scream 5 returning. This entry picks up with our characters having moved to New York to try and move on from the past events with a new series of Ghostface killings beginning in New York. So I am a big fan of the Scream series with the original being my favorite and I was interested to see this new one because while I did enjoy the fifth movie it was very much just a retread of the first. Intentionally so but still. So I was excited for this movie because this was the first one where they can kind of branch off with the new characters and tell an original new story. And they just kind of made a reskin of Scream 2, just set in New York. Oh, and they also actively make all of the actual kills in this movie only bystanders and people that aren't involved in the story. Like five main characters in this movie get mutilated and survive. This, while I found it to have some really great sequences and it to be a well-paced film, this just kind of felt pointless, especially when it's very obvious now what they're doing. This series has reached a point where the meta aspects really are the worst parts to me. There's a scene in this new one where a character has a whole thing about requels where they try to explain all the rules for that and it just, it was, it was all so corny. I know the original is corny, but there's a sort of cynical sense of humor to that movie, and I don't get that at all from this new one. I can't say this movie is poorly made at all, but it loses any stakes it could have had by not bothering to go through with what they had set up. This movie really kind of made me realize that I'm very burnt out with all the sequels and stuff that have been coming out recently. It sucks too, because it seems like there's a lot of, that's, that's a lot of what's in theaters anymore. Smaller movies do get released, but at least where I am, they only ever seem to play for a short amount of time, if at, if at all. There were parts of this that I did like. The opening of this was great. I appreciate the twist they did and the Four Flies in Grey Velvet t-shirt that Tony Rever Laurie's character is wearing is great. The subway sequence is also fun, same with the supermarket one. There's a lot of great tension that they pull with the characters hiding from Ghostface in New York, and I found it found all of that to really be great. Honestly, to package up my problems with this movie, I'd say its biggest fault is that it's a Scream movie. There is quite a bit of the character interactions that I did enjoy and I thought that the performances were good. Then this stupid meta Scream sequel barges in with these hammy breakdown moments and just it's, it's just copying Scream 2, which I guess I should say I, I get that this is supposed to come in some way of being like a meta thing, but I, I don't care. A new wholly original story would be better. I don't want to sound entirely negative on this movie because it seems to be received really well by everybody else and in my theater we had people cheer at the end and online I've seen that shared as well so I don't know I, I guess this is a crowd pleaser. I won't lie, I did enjoy watching it, it just becomes worse the more that I think about it, and especially since this movie had the whole issue with Nev Campbell not getting the pay she wanted and there was a whole bit of drama there, I kind of have a bad taste in my mouth with this one, and it, despite its attempts, its charms didn't really last long for me, and I'm feeling very much done and kind of tired of this franchise after this. So overall, I will say that Scream 6 is a, is a well-made movie that has some great sequences throughout the runtime. The performances are good, but for me, the meta aspects were just very tired at this point. The dialogue in some parts is very corny, and I think they could have benefited from going a more original direction rather than remaking Scream 2 and setting up a Scream 7 that'll inevitably be a remake of Scream 3. I think I can take the Scream 4... Take the four Scream movies that Wes Craven directed and call it a day. I'm giving Scream 6 a 5 out of 10. I do recommend checking it out if you haven't and are you're just out looking for a horror movie to watch, then yeah, go ahead, it's good. But as a sixth movie in this franchise, I found it to be kind of tired at this point. Wes Craven's New Nightmare is directed by Wes Craven. This is the seventh and final film in the Elm Street franchise and has Heather Langenkamp returning to play herself. In this meta horror film, a demonic entity uses the fictional character Freddy Krueger to enter the real world to, and torment Elm Street heroine Heather Langenkamp and her family. So I decided to go along with the sixth scream. I might as well do a re review for Wes Craven's New Nightmare. 
This has been said before, but this really is the precursor to Scream as a franchise, really, where Wes Craven really explored all the meta ideas, except instead of it being a bunch of characters who are conscious that they are in a horror movie, this obviously is the horror monster attacking the actors that play the characters. I have always, always really enjoyed this one, just for how different it feels in the franchise, despite the fact that this movie does retread a lot of beats from the first film. From the beginning, this film starts with a sort of recreation of the opening of the original film with Freddy making his glove, but this is shown to be a film set, which then turns into a nightmare that Heather Langenkamp is having. This is all interrupted by an earthquake. And this film moves at this sort of weird rapid pace for a bit. There are points where it kind of pushes the, oh, it was just a nightmare thing a bit too much. But overall, I do really enjoy the concept of this movie and the execution. The idea that a demon takes the form of Freddy to go after the people that made the movie is a great idea. It does go too far with the long exposition filled monologue from Wes Craven himself in the movie where he explains everything and to the point that where it just gets pretty silly. The idea he says is that this demon is trapped by creatives or writers so when they start started making Nightmare on Elm Street movies it trapped the demon for 10 years and it is free now which is a bit too much and I think they could have gone a bit more straightforward and just had it be that that's how he decided to look and behave whatever. That being said, there is a lot of meta stuff in this, like the way it brings up the movies that Heather Langenkamp is in and how does she handle that with her child. There's a lot of meta scenes with that, as well as her son in the movie who does end up watching the first Nightmare on Elm Street, which does not help this kid at all since he already has trouble sleeping leaving his stuffed animal Rex at the foot of his bed saying it's his protector. And that idea is one that I really like in this. He's going after a small child in this movie. And the weird entryway for him is through the foot of his bed. It's a visual and idea that the other movies never really brought up or explored. And it's such a good childhood fear to show in a movie. It's the monster under the bed, you know. I really enjoyed a lot of the visuals in this with Freddy and getting into his world, but once you really do get there and it's the whole hell world thing, it does have a few questionable shots that have not aged well at all. I can't really say that the final act is really that satisfying, but I'll take the conclusion to this movie over the conclusion to Freddy's Dead. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> It's... This isn't a perfect movie by any means, but as the seventh entry in a series that has been run into the ground, this is a fun, fun little twist on the Nightmare on Elm Street series. It's a solid, solid one to call the end of the franchise. I have returned to this one the most next to the original when it comes to the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, and while it isn't the most fun, and you know, there are parts of each that I enjoy, I would say that this is one of the best films in the franchise. If you haven't seen Wes Craven's New Nightmare and you're in a meta mood after Scream 6, then go back and check out that one for some more fun with that. If you saw Scream 6, then leave your thoughts on it in the comments or what your favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie is and why. And if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.